Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, 3. Welcome to the program. It's got that name, Great and Mighty Things. Because that's why we're here, to show you great and mighty things. Now, some of them God has shown us. Uh, there's still some things out there that he has not shown us yet. That's right. It uh, says that the secret things, he says, belong to me. But he said, once I've revealed them to you, then they're yours. And you can, you can go with them. And uh, he is continually revealing himself to us until we fully become naturally what we already are eternally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because we are, et when we come to Jesus, we become eternal beings. I'm Reverend Kendall Hetrick. On my right is Reverend Bob Butler, the host of the program. I'm the most usual co-host. Um, occasionally, I'm not on a program, but, but rarely, pretty kind of rare. Um, sometimes I, well, like uh, a few programs ago, I stepped out and let Jerry and, and Algie um, carry the ball, and so. Uh, um, they had right. a new guest. <laughs> when he did that. Yep. So, so anyway, I'm oh, back, wow. um, and, and we are dealing with, again, this uh, aspect of intimacy with the Godhead, and it, it, we're breaking it down into different stages and different yes. aspects and looking at different facets of it, but it's the whole diamond. I mean, we, 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 we roll it around, and we find this little aspect of it here, and we look at it, but, but all of those facets come together to make that single diamond and to bring the brilliance out of it. Uh, without one of the facets, it would not be as brilliant. It wouldn't have the same clarity in it. And, and that's kind of the way it is with, with our walk with, with God. Uh, again, in the last program, we were talking the reciprocal indwelling of the believer, he and us and we and him, and, and how that flow and interaction works back and forth. Uh, and it is not simply, although it is a natural thing, it, 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 he has changed me on the natural level, on the soulish level, but it is first and foremost and ultimately a spiritual thing. And what makes it a little difficult for some people is getting that over into the spiritual realm because we are so naturally minded, so, so carnally minded, yeah. uh, that we 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 think of it in in the in natural terms and natural aspects so much more than we do in spiritual ones and uh, so that's kind of where we're, we're we're breaking this down and we're looking at it from from different perspectives and different viewpoints so that we can see uh, hopefully ultimately at least um, a portion of the brilliance of what we have been given well, we haven't mentioned yet in this set of programs, but uh, the revelation knowledge of God's absolute truth is one of the keys mm -hmm. to developing this intimate relationship and, and this connection to all the other things that we've been talking about. Like mm -hmm. you said, we've been dealing with little segments, and the little segments all tie together. Uh, years and years ago, God would show me glimpses of things in the spirit realm and I've shared this before and I really didn't understand what he was showing me and I didn't have a way to communicate it other than in tongues and you'd have to pray for interpretation uh, but recently when he 19 or 2012 when he said I want you to teach on intimacy with, with Jesus from that point on at several different times now he's brought these little glimpses like we're talking about with a little nugget here and a little nugget there and a little nugget. Well, he's bringing them together so we can see now how the whole big picture relates to us mimicking, and or that's one of the words we use, but, but operating on the earth the same way Jesus did. Uh, the devil don't want us doing that. He had enough trouble dealing with one. Now, if he's got millions, I mean, that'd drive the guy stir crazy. Well... Mm -hmm. Or she's crazy to begin yeah, with. He like started it. out crazy. So, <laughs> so <laughs> once you make a decision to defy God, you're, you're, you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> so let's jump back here into John chapter six, and then start reading through here, and then we'll let's read a couple of verses or whatever, and, and we'll stop and to kind of dissect them. You want to start in thirty-five, six thirty-five? Let's see where we go from here. Six thirty-five. Okay. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All right, let's stop there. Okay, it's a good place. <laughs> I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in John 1, 1, 
It says John, Jesus is the Word. Mm -hmm. Well, if Jesus is the Word and Jesus is the bread of life, that means Jesus' bread of life must be the Word. Mm -hmm. They're synonymous. So if we're into the Word, we're in the bread of life. Now, we'll, we'll probably repeat some of this as we go through here oh, because probably. he repeated the fact that he was the bread of life at least four or five times in this chapter, which means... Uh, Every time he said that, he's saying, I am the word of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, going on. He that com cometh to me shall never hunger. So evidently, when you feed on the bread of life, you shouldn't be hungry. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be hungry physically. You shouldn't be hungry spiritually because you're being fed. Now, your appetite may get bigger <laughs> like it did with me when I first got saved. I couldn't get enough of the Bible. I just wanted to sit there and read and read and read and devour until I... You just had to give up for a little while. Okay, so you never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now, some people, and myself included, is you never thirst. Well, how does how does eating the bread of life relate to thirsty? See, I can relate to it being hungry, because we can make analogies to when we eat a meal, we eat something that's solid, a chunk of meat or something. But then we usually have some liquid to go along with our meal. Now I can relate to that being thirsty. Believe it on me shall never thirst. So uh, there's got to be a correlation here between the thirst that he's talking about and the, and the blood that he gave and the body that he is. Now we'll, we'll get through here. We'll probably, this will probably come out when we get through here further because there's a lot of scriptures that deal with this subject. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you want to add to any of that? I'm sure you could. Oh, I think we'll let it go for a little bit. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Okay. Well, what does that tell you? Well, it tells me that, that God in his foreknowledge has determined who of us are going to come to the Christ and has that plan for us and again this is this top level um, he has a plan for our life that he wants to see fulfilled in each one of us and so there is a progression of experiences that he by by the spirit will lead us into to bring us to a place where we become what he wants us to be Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, he's he's trying to reestablish us in that original Adamic creation to to take man now after the fall back to pre-fall, where uh, in Genesis one twenty six, where he said, "Okay, here here you are. Here's this world. It's yours. Fellowship with me and and run it and control it." And and I believe. And agree with everything you said but I would add this to it uh, I think that Jesus because of the father had told him I'm gonna bring these people to you and you're not gonna cast them out because the last part of that says uh, him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out so everyone that has come to Jesus they didn't come because of their own premonition uh, Jesus makes, or it was made, it's made in common, it's in the Bible, that if you lift Jesus up, he's the draw. And, and if you lift Jesus up, people will come to him. Well, yes. And some time back, years back, you know, we were praying for salvation for distant people. And uh, the word of the Lord shared with me the fact that not everybody will become a Christian. And I, I, that disturbed me for a while because in Timothy he says, I desire that all come to the saving knowledge of the truth of salvation. Yeah. Uh, or Jesus. Uh, the truth of salvation, what it says. But the, the, what he's talking about is, is everybody. He wants, his desire is that everybody comes to, this, to Jesus mm -hmm. as Lord and Savior. Now we've talked about the two Savior and then Lord because his Lordship will not tamper with. But we want to be Lord of our life, and that's our responsibility. Making you can have Him Savior and run around and live like you always did, 
And you may lose your salvation because you've never made him Lord of your life. You say, Lord, what are we going to do today? I've heard people say, well, I've asked him in the morning, what are we going to do today? And I've never heard anything. Well, how much word have you been in? Because <laughs> he is the word, and the word is what talks to us. Uh, I'm getting a little bit off course here, but not not really that bad because... Well, there, there's an aspect of uh, there, there is an aspect of his lordship, which is immutable. We'll not mess with it. He he's boss. That's right. That's it. That's it. He he's there. But in, in the daily walking out and aspects of my life, am I making him lord? Yes, exactly. Uh, when when I have, um, and, and some of, uh, I just wrote up a paper on spiritual warfare to uh, to give to some people who needed some teaching on it and uh, in that I, I went to Stan Pratt which you, you know brother Stan Stan says that the first aspect uh, I mean now he's not the only one but I, I, I use him as an example that the first aspect of spiritual warfare is a decision it's a choice mm -hmm. and and exactly that's the same thing with with lordship our first aspect or our first level of making him Lord is a choice Am I going to do what he says? Am I going to do what's right? Or am I going to do what I want to do? Mm -hmm. Well, if I do consist consistently and continually what I want to do, then that negates his lordship. He is not totally lord of your life. He, he, is, he is lord in that general term, but he's not lord in that, in that specific. intimate, specific That's, uh, yeah, you said life it. You said way it. You said it. that he wants to be and that we need him to be. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Uh, it, it deals directly with our intimacy with him. Mm -hmm. If he's not Lord, he's not going to be very intimate. Sure. Uh, over to the level of it, of Lordship you've allowed him to have. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> well, well we, used, we used to have, a, I don't know if you ever knew Belle Hardy. She was very finally married and it's called Belle Woods from, from down around Havana. I don't know if you ever met. I've heard the uh, name, but I don't know her. You might have been in a place or two. Uh, actually, you would, you might have seen her in Tulsa camp meeting back years ago. But anyway, uh, again, 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> you, you overnight with us. You don't have a relationship and a fellowship with her that I did, so you don't you don't know her. You know that that, that level of intimacy is not there. That's uh, right, and and, and and so that's another whole thing we talked about earlier. So here you go. You know, <laughs> uh, there it is again, uh, and there again, people can sit around and talk about Jesus and and, and not know Him at the same levels. But anyway, uh, Bell always said God will relate to you the same way that you relate to Him. It's a good point. If you talk to Him boldly and, and openly and 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 freely, uh, He'll respond boldly and openly and freely to you. Yes, that's true. And 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 I've. You know, I've, I've thought of that a lot of times because a lot of people say, "Well, I want I want God to speak to me," and she says, "Well, how you relate to Him is how He relates to you. How much do you talk to Him?" Yep. Well, uh, you want to move on thirty-eight? Okay, we can do that. Verse thirty-eight says, "For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of Him that sent me." Now, I want to inject something here because we were listening to Graham, uh, uh, Graham, Graham, Graham. He's an English guy that come over here. You've probably heard him say, Off camera, we're getting Cook. Oh, Cook? Oh, okay. He's the Cook. <laughs> Graham Cook. Okay. Okay. What he, we were watching his video on the DVD last the last couple of nights okay and he was saying some things regarding intimacy through his whole teaching but he wasn't he wasn't always specifically tying it to intimacy but it does because everything does everything does yeah. everything does so anyhow he came down from heaven to do his own will and what he was referring to is uh, we, we were created with a free will mm -hmm. but when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior mm -hmm. you died Okay. So with you, your free will was supposed to die with that. Mm -hmm. Now, we like to resurrect our free will. We don't want it to die. Mm -hmm. and, and through several aspects of his teaching, he would point out the fact that uh, when Lord would tell us something or something from the Word we read, but, but I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you've taken your will back now. Mm -hmm. Die. <laughs> Go away, die, because that's right. not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, see, this is one of the aspects of what... Your famous saying of, of Hebrews 
five and six mm -hmm. transition toward justification. Because in that transition towards justification, we have to realize the fact that when we became born again, our old man, that spiritual man, mm -hmm. died. Okay. We're still living in the same flesh body. We still have the same soul we had, but it lost its authority mm -hmm. because the spirit man that we are is really the authority. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if our soul man today as born-again Christians is not following God the way we're supposed to be following God, Mm -hmm. in, you're in an element of disobedience. Okay. Well, and, and here again, we're talking about communion. We haven't got really got into well, it. We're yet. getting there. <laughs> but uh, but as, as as you look at the the ordinances or the uh, the sacraments, depending on which kind of terminology you use, and you basically where you go to church, <laughs> um, how Calvinistic or how whatever you are, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what, whatever base that has. Um, the church basically does two things. It has baptism and it has the Lord's Supper, mm -hmm. the Eucharist, the, the, yep. the, the Lord's table, uh, however, again, you to deal with it. And many churches, if you have not had baptism, the sacrament or the rite or whatever, however you want to terminology you want to use, but if you have not been baptized, then you're not allowed to participate in communion mm -hmm. uh, in the natural act in the, the fellowship of this particular group of believers. Uh, the reason for that being, if there has not been the death to the self-life, which is portrayed in baptism and in the resurrection mm -hmm. from that, if there hasn't been that death of the self-life, then you are, not, you are not a believer. And therefore, uh, again here, communion is peculiarly for believers, believers. only. There, there, there cannot be communion between light and dark. That's what he just yeah, said earlier. Things, things you know, we were talking about, and and so um, this again, you know, it, it's just another facet of the tying together of all of this uh, flow of things. To and, and that's what work. we're doing now, discussing this fact of intimacy that we are mm -hmm. to what God provided out there. Sure. That's another la layer of growth, if you want to talk about it that mm -hmm. way. See, we get caught up in religious theology. And that's what you were just talking about. Uh, what it, what does this communion? And that's what hopefully when we get done with this, we will all understand uh, what this communion is really all about. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not a tradition. It's not just something that we take lightly, right. which we have for years and years and years. So some some denominations, at the first Sunday of every month, they, they go eat bread and drink juice, and they that's it without ever understanding what is going on in in them mm -hmm. when they're doing that. And that's what we want to bring out to get you thinking more about how does this relate to me? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saved. Okay, that's one aspect of it. I'm saved. But what about the rest of it? Mm -hmm. uh, years back, you and I talked about the word salvation mm -hmm. and what all that word stands for, what's included in that word. Well, the simple thing is, in, in one of the Greek or Hebrew, I think it's in Greek, it, it's called sozo, mm -hmm. which is all-encompassing life of God. No, no holes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we have not come to the point as believers yet to digest and understand that whole entirety of what salvation is really all about. Mm -hmm. We're getting there, yeah. <laughs> piece at a time. Mm -hmm. And communion that we're talking about is part of that. Okay. Well, here again, we're we're admonished in other places, and I know it's you know again there's so much stuff that we can <laughs> well it, we can deal with, but we're admonished to pray for the pre peace of Jerusalem. Sure. And and most people when they pray for the peace of Jerusalem, are not really praying for the shalom peace of Jerusalem. They're praying that that it be a place without war and without turmoil. Natural. In, in a natural realm. Peace is not an absence of anything. No. Peace is the presence of everything being lined up perfectly plumb, perfectly joined together with the cornerstone. That's right. That's right. And, and when you are in that place, then you have the natural peace. Plus. B because you've got you've got the real peace. When, when uh, you know, again, we've talked about it another time. When you get the battle out of the spirit realm, over into the natural realm, even if you win, you lose. 
<laughs> because you have never really dealt with the situation and the source and you're not if you're not right where you're supposed to be right then everything else is wrong because you haven't dealt on the spiritual side of it but dealing with the natural side of it um, again we've used the example in other times uh, about okay you're driving down the road on, on Sunday and here's some guy out here you're, you're headed for church and he's out here farming and and I know people that in you know in the natural zone, well what's he doing out there working on the, on on Sabbath and on Sunday you know uh, it, if he is not in the right relationship with God he just will be out there doing something yeah, as yeah. setting in church because setting in church on a Sunday is not accomplishing him anything either because it's not a sin to him it's not a sin to him because if you go to Romans chapter fourteen the last verse says anything you do without faith is sin. Right. Well, he had no faith in out there working on that pat tractor doing what he's doing. Right. And he, faith wasn't involved in his thinking at all. Yeah. It's so all it wasn't sin to him. Natural progression of, hey, I got the job I got to get it. it done. The weather's nice. I'm going to go do it. Actually, uh, he's probably more scriptural than some of the people who are sitting in church because it says, <laughs> you know, it says over there, so whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And that's what he's doing. That's what he was doing. Okay. Well, well, let's back back to communion. And let's move on. Yes. We, we got some more here. Let that rabbit go. Where you at? 39? Um, yes. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all them which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Okay. Uh, again, here's, here, Jesus is basically just, you know, reiterating again. Uh, here are these that are going to come to me. I won't cast them out. I not only won't cast them out, uh, they will be protected and brought through to that last day in the last well this party says and I should lose nothing but mm -hmm. should raise it up again in the last day lose nothing not to me uh, it's a clue that one of his 12 disciples was going to turn on him now we know that Judas Iscariot was not full of the devil all the time that he was with the with Jesus no it came on the devil came on him when the timing was such that he was supposed to do that uh, he didn't know that was what the plan was, but God did. Uh, and God, you know, people say, well, poor old Jesus is scared. He didn't make it to heaven. Well, we don't know all of went on after that. We know that he tried to repent because he tried to give the coins back to the people that paid him. They said, we don't want that. That's blood money. We don't want that. And they wouldn't take it back. Well, we don't want to get off and talking about teaching about him. But here we're here we are in a way because intimacy with the Godhead. And he was trying to be intimate, but at that point in time, that point in time, he couldn't be. Well, again, you get a little farther over here. A couple more chapters over here in John, when you read about the, the, that, the Last Supper, the, the Passover, uh, he doesn't talk about the cup and uh, the bread and the cup, but John specifically deals with Judas and the, uh, uh, well, I mean, say in all of the, the Gospels, but th they deal with the fact that Judas even up to the end of the, at the supper, uh, was still there, and and finally at that time in that in that in that time when he should have been at a close, you know, Jesus yes. was in a close intimate relationship yes. with with all of his disciples, and he turned, even in the midst of that time and that 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 atmosphere, he turned to the devil and says then Satan entered him. And, and took over. If you read the Amplified, they really, basically really took over in possession after Jesus handed him, G, took from Jesus' hand the, the, the morsel that, that Jesus had dipped. And it said that at that time when, the, when he should have turned left or right, whichever way he turned the other. Yep. Now I'm going to throw something out here that's really is a theological firebomb. Uh, the question is the 12 disciples under the Old Covenant. None of them were born again. They couldn't be. Mm -mm. But yet a lot of... I've heard ministers rebuke that, and they say, well, not only were they Christians, people of the Old Covenant that accepted what God told them are also Christians. And I say, no. Because until Jesus was resurrected from the dead, the ability, capability, the opportunity to become born again Christian did not exist. Uh, we're talking about that right here in reference to Judas Iscariot. 
they were followers of Jesus. They were listening to Jesus. They were growing and ministering to the people and, and doing everything that they were supposed to do because of Jesus. But they didn't have that intimate relationship that we have. Right. There again, they, he may well have been Lord yes. because they were listening to him. They were following yes. his precepts, yes. but he wasn't Savior. Yes. They weren't That's saved. Right. Not yet. That's right. The, okay. penalty, the penalty had not been paid. That's exactly right. So there, you people can write us and do what you want to, but that's the bottom line. And scripturally, that's the bottom line. Do you want to go on? No, but I will. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Well, we got five minutes left. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now this is prophetic. Mm -hmm. Hadn't happened yet. But it says here, now one of my little notes on my thing says, hungry, thirsty, eternal life, which is what we got. Your free will and believing in or on Jesus. Now this is dealing with some of that here. Believeth on him, believeth in him. Mm -hmm. May have everlasting life. May have. Well, it's, a, it's an introduction or a prophecy that if you do, the opportunity will be there that then you can have this. Mm -hmm. It's like the promises of God that... Uh, uh, we read about and understand but until you react to them they're not yours mm -hmm. you only know about them it, it's and we can relate to our intimate relationship with somebody the same way mm -hmm. well, we used to call it in especially in the realm of healing still do uh, corresponding actions yes uh, we can have it we can know it we can we can see it but until we begin to live like it is true it's it's the reality is not there, and uh, we, uh, you know, yeah, uh, a lot of observations I could use. But uh, the isn't it fun though how God would just dump all this stuff on you and say, "There right. you go. What's your choice you want to use?" They're all good. Right. They're they're all good. Um, well, I won't go there either. Thank one you. of the, one of the best ways to teach is give examples to put it so it can be understood in a reality that where we normally think because mm -hmm. it's hard for humans to think spiritually mm -hmm. yeah it is um, and, and here again you know um, and again back to, back to that uh, aspect of, of believing we we sometimes make mental what we call mental assent mm -hmm. uh, we, we will mentally agree with it or agree with it in, in, in on, a, on a certain level but um, Unless it's become a part of our life and we're we're living it, it's like if somebody ran down ran ran in here and come down the stairs and said said Hey, the, the building's on fire. Uh, if we believe that, we'll take action. We we will we will we'll get up and we'll get out. <coughs> and uh, and if we if we don't believe them, then we won't we we'll, we'll we'll make still it sit here. right. Um, and and so that's why when we when we see something revealed in the Word of God by His Spirit reveals something to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to a we need to be in the place where we can recognize when he does tell us something but uh it doesn't take much to be able to recognize it when we read it here in in, in black and white or red and white uh, to, to say that okay that's that's something i need to deal with you know and when he says go into all the world and preach the gospel uh, well does that really we, say that we, we don't really <laughs> have a whole lot of choice but going into the world and preaching the gospel uh, now there again that's a general command, uh, and I can't just run off willy-nilly and, and and go do something that I think I want to do just because that there's a just because there's something there doesn't mean uh, you know we, we come back to the old thing. Well, just because I can do it doesn't mean I should do, do it. That's right. Uh, that's where <laughs> we, we we come back again to the leading of the spirit. Okay, you want me to, to go? What 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 would how would you like me to do that? And 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 it comes back into that relationship that we have with him. See, we, yeah. when we were baby Christians, we used to get caught up in that. Oh, well, here's something we need to do. And we go and do it. And God said, I didn't tell you to do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> case in point, I was, we uh, had a fellow riding with us last night and we were, were it's Christian, and, and he was talking about uh, a particular person that just got saved a couple weeks ago that he knew. And and now he said, this guy is just on fire. He's got all this zeal. He said, he's running around, he's running around telling all these people, well, how come you're smoking? How come you're drinking? How come you use the Lord's name in vain? You know, and and he said, I'm following him around. And said, 
hey, you know, just <laughs> to give him time, he'll chill out, you know. Uh, what you're doing is wrong, but, you know. So you got the last, you just ran out of that minute. I ran out of the minute. Okay, well, tune in again to Great and Mighty Things, and we'll share more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>